Hey, John. So I got your message about the presidential campaign in the U.S. and what I thought about it. So I want to let you know because it's been on my mind almost every day. You know, I work online and I mean, it's just nonstop. It's this nonstop barrage of madness. It's like a fucking circus. It's so annoying to the point where I don't want to even hear or think about it, but I know that if you don't participate, this is actually a, a quote by Plato, if you don't participate in politics, then politics takes control of you. I think it's either like take control of politics or politics will take control of you. Basically, if you don't participate, then you're going to be run. And the idea is that we run the country because we participate. And I'm like putting into perspective the democracy that we have is a result of being oppressed under a king. So when you don't have power, like when you're led by like one dictator, it puts in, these people like really wanted a sense of freedom and balance and just like a, a, a fr like a legit society where everyone can thrive and flourish. So they wrote these 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 articles to be like this is how it is there's gonna be governors there's gonna be states the states have their own rights the people can vote they they pick the who they want to represent them every so often for some foolish reason supreme court justices aren't aren't voted out they should be i don't even you know i think so it's like we have this system that guarantees that we're not going to be in like a Put, slung into a dictatorship. So we have to participate in it for that reason. If any other reason, for that reason. So that someone just doesn't take over and then put us all under their thumb. The Bernie Sanders is by far the greatest candidate. He's the only one that wants world peace that I can tell. The other people, like... Jeb Bush, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton are like, those are the only, I mean, the, the only other person that I, I feel like is making noise, well, the only other people I feel like is making noise around the world is Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I mean, Jeb Bush, just because his last name is Bush, but he's not really, doesn't really have anything to say, it sounds like, for the most part. Donald Trump comes on stage to, you're the best around from Karate Kid, like he's fucking Mr. Miyagi. This guy's like... Ins insidiously out of touch with me. I don't think he, he he's like a, a win win or go home kind of guy. Like he's not a Demo he's not a Democrat. He's not a he's not someone that like he's not a servant. He wants to I think his actual quote is like let's see, I'll see if I can pull this quote up within the next ten seconds. The way he referred to uh, to leadership, to being in the leadership position. I just did a blog on Donald Trump. I was calling it his reign. He was referring to to uh, George Bush Jr. And now when he reigned as president, it wasn't very good. And I'm like, dude, kings reign. Presidents serve. You don't reign as president. You're, you're not controlling. You know, your job is to serve people as their representative. So that he doesn't understand that, so he's no good. Hillary Clinton is a rich warmonger that's left over from the Cold War. She's obsessed with combat. She's combative by nature. She doesn't like the Republicans, which is like, dude, if you're going to go into it saying you don't like people, then you're not the right person for the job. She's afraid of Vladimir Putin. Like, she just wants to fight. She's crazy. And the problem with... Hillary that right now it's going on. I agree. She's a woman. And yeah, I would like to see a woman in office. But this is something I was telling a friend of mine. If I wanted a brown shirt, I wouldn't smear poop on it to make it brown. And that's like wanting a woman in office. I'm not just going to shove some random piece of feces into office that's a female to, to get my wish. She's not the right person. So her emails, this is what's going on. The Benghazi thing came out 
they, they had to grab her servers to find out about what happened in Benghazi. Four people got killed. Was she responsible? Turns out, no, she wasn't responsible. She, no one could have known that that night something was going to happen. She probably had information that it was unrest. She Maybe she wasn't listening clearly enough, but it's like it's hindsight. What are you going to do? You're not going to... She's not going to lose the job that she used to have because she fucked it up back in the day. Like Benghazi is like a, I, I keep calling it a smoke screen. It came out, but then what happened was they pulled her servers to be like, let's find out if she, what she knew about Benghazi. And what they found was all these emails between her and a guy named Sidney Blumenthal, who is like best friends with the Clintons, has been super tight with Bill Clinton. He was, he advised him when he was president in the 90s. They pay him $10,000 a month, Bill and Hillary, for to be part of the Clinton Foundation, which is their their trust, their charity or whatever. They just pay this 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 war profiteer Sidney Blumenthal and what he does is he like brokers deals between arms developers and governments. Or at least this is what he wanted to do in Libya. So he was emailing Hillary like thousands of emails and she tried to delete a bunch of them when she turned them over she turned over her servers she missed some there are there are like a few really incriminating emails that came through of Sydney being like go to war in Libya you have to take out Gaddafi it's got to happen and and Hillary's like this is before we invaded Libya Hillary's like I, I okay good I get keep it coming keep telling me the information let's keep I love this these emails Sid keep keep them coming then she forwards these emails to like I think she actually forwarded the emails to the ambassador in Libya, Chris, uh, whatever his name was, that got killed. He she was sit, forwarding him Sydney Blumenthal emails. She was like forwarding Sydney Blumenthal emails to other people in like political power. So Sydney was like barred from the United States government by Eric or uh, by the chief of staff Rahm Emanuel at the time. They told Hillary he cannot work for you. We don't trust him. We don't like him. He's not allowed to work for the the State Department. So she's created a second fake, e like a hidden email account. She had a personal email account, which everyone's talking about. She had a second personal email account that was purely to corroborate with Sidney Blumenthal. So thousands of emails going back and forth, literally. To over 2,000, I think there's like 5,000 emails that came up on record, at least, or 4,500 or something, of them talking about Libya. And other stuff around the world but like he was her number one Libyan advisor he was like sent thousands I don't know if it was like a thousand emails about Libya to her when like she was getting no emails about Libya from anybody else you know if any and then she says he wasn't my advisor I didn't solicit it but she's like keep it coming I love it keep sending them this way that's soliciting when you ask someone to send you something you're soliciting them um and he was advising her. Whether she wants to say he was my advisor, he wasn't my advisor, he was sending her advice about what to do. And specific advice, like, I want to get Osprey Global Solutions a position with the new Libyan government as a defense contractor. We're just honest brokers making this job, doing this job. It, a quote. That's a quote. We are just honest brokers. He's talking about he and his two partners. And Hillary just like goes along with it because she's got her bubble. She even refers to her bubble in her emails of political power, like these people within her bubble that she she's like, I'll send it to some people outside the bubble. So she just does. She just she's working for her friends. She wants she went and pushed us into war in Libya to get Sydney to follow Sydney's advice and to get him a defense uh, contract. Well, to, to let him broker a defense contract and make a bunch of money. She's insane and dangerous. So I found eight years ago, it was just like Barack Obama. I didn't even waste my breath on the other people because I wasn't afraid of them. I didn't care about them. It was like, dude, there's no other person for the job than Obama at that time. I mean, it was like a joke to even consider other people. I feel like the same thing with Bernie Sanders right now. These people are psychotic. Bernie's the man. He wants fucking free college, which we can do. He wants free health care, which we can do. He wants peace in the Middle East, which we can do. You know that like Iraq and Afghanistan, most a lot of the people that are fleeing um, the Middle East, I don't know if you know about these refugees right now, they're fleeing to, to Greece. Like tens of thousands of people are fleeing from Afghanistan and Iraq because the regimes there are like 
murderous. Yeah, we like great. We went to war there, and now there's just these murderous regimes in power in these countries. This is what's happening when we go over and half-assed kill a bunch of people just to steal some oil. All hell breaks loose. So it's not helping the world, and we can print oil from molecular printers. We don't need to fucking bastardize the earth right now. Um, I feel like the the debate speaks for itself. What drives me nuts is that I watched that first presidential debate and Bernie Sanders was like, yeah, maybe it's bad politics, but I don't give a shit about your emails. It's like, dude, wake the fuck up. If you don't know that what's in her emails, you got to fucking educate yourself. Uh, because that's like worse than Watergate. She took us into war. Did you see the video of her being like, we came, we saw, he died. Talking about Muammar Gaddafi, she didn't, she didn't think the camera was on as before an interview. She's, she's a fucking loop job, dude. <sighs> yeah, Bernie was like a conscientious objector during Vietnam. I mean, if you know anything about the global economy right now, Iceland, if you follow Iceland's, basically after the 2008 recession, where we bailed out the banks and paid like billions of dollars to these banks that had just fucked us. Iceland was like, no, fuck you. And they, they it jailed a bunch of bankers and then started printing their own money. And their economy is doing extremely well right now. That's what we gotta do. And what it really comes down to is a unified force of people. People, I don't think that they necessarily realize. Maybe you don't realize your power. But when 10 of us get together, that's a big problem for a lot of people. We can do a lot of damage and a lot of good. 10, a lot of people, a thousand people in a group, in a well-coordinated group. That's what a military is. Except they have weapons. But, you know, a peaceful group of a thousand or ten thousand people that's coordinated. Occupy Wall Street had people fucking on their heels. They were ready to submit. The bankers, these people aren't warriors. They're not fighters. They're afraid. They cower. They, they're greedy and they don't want to lose money they live in fear of loss so that's why they're easy to defeat they're easy to change they're easy to take control of they don't want to get hurt they don't want to go to jail i mean if anything they're they have less they have more to lose and less like less of a reason to they don't they have less of like uh i guess maybe it's not less of a desire to go to jail but it's like they have more of a fear of of loss than people that don't have anything so I mean, we can screw the fuck out of them. I, I'm not sure. I don't like this whole us and them thing because we're all one unit. And if the right hand is ripping the skin off the left arm, the right hand's not going to be around for much longer. So Bernie, you know, a good point that he made is that he can't do shit. No president can do shit. They're going to tell you they can, but they can't. The people have to come together and force change, either by phone calls, which are relatively effective, but people can always dodge a phone call, or going to the Capitol and surrounding it with a list of demands. What is government? Go I, this has been going through my head like... It's not just like those guys in power. Those 350 people aren't just like... They're, they're nothing. They're, they're just there because we let them be there. So if we want change, we change. I'm shaking the rust out right now. I can feel it. I got more to do. I'm going to make a blog about how foxes hunt by uh, using the magnetic field of the Earth, apparently. Pretty interesting.
log. I'm getting fed up with representative democracy because it doesn't fucking work. We should be voting online. It should be public fucking knowledge. I'm, I'm like, oh, there's going to be voter fraud. What's the point of even fucking voting when there's voter fraud? There's voter fraud. There's like documented voter fraud. So we have to publicly vote. Otherwise, there will be more voter fraud. This fucking Florida guy, this guy in Florida, like, wrote a program to flip the vote 5149. It's like, a, and he goes in, in, in testimony testifying that that's what he did. You can look, look up video of it. It's crazy. It's so easy to manipulate a, a, a mechanical vote. So I propose that we all vote online with our social security numbers next to it so there's fucking proof it's the only way if you don't fucking back up what you say then you're shit you have to get behind what you believe publicly 